Well, the showdown is set to go tonight here in Danville, Kentucky. This is the stage where Vice President Biden and Congressman Paul Ryan will go toe to toe. Four years ago, some said Joe Biden was careful not to be too aggressive in his matchup with Governor Sarah Palin. But today, there is word of a very different plan. They are saying the gloves will be off. The 2008 debate in St. Louis was one of the most watched ever for the vice presidential candidates. 70 million TV viewers tuned in. And here's a look back at some of the most memorable moments. Nice to meet you. Hey, can I call you Joe? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you. Ahmadinejad, Kim Jong Il, uh, the Castro brothers, others who are dangerous dictators are ones that Barack Obama has said he would be willing to meet with without preconditions being met first. The chant is drill baby drill and that's what we hear all across in this country in our rallies because people are so hungry for those domestic sources of energy to be tapped into. And I may not answer the questions the way that either the moderator or you want to hear but I'm going to talk straight to the American people and let them know my track record also. And it's so obvious that I'm a Washington outsider and uh, someone just not used to the way you guys operate because here you voted for the war and now you oppose the war. You're one who says, you know, as so many politicians do, I was for it before I was against it or vice versa. Well, that, of course, was then Governor Sarah Palin and she joins me now, right now live. She was, of course, the 2008 vice presidential candidate on the GOP ticket. Governor. Welcome back to the program. Great to see you. It's fun to look at those clips, uh, and I'm sure it's more fun for you now, four years removed from it, than it was the morning of. Uh, take us back to that day four years ago as you were preparing to go up against Joe Biden. What were you being told to expect about his debate style? Well, first, um, I've never seen clips of the debate. I've never watched uh, any of those reruns really? from four years ago, from the acceptance speech to, to the debate or anything. No, life goes on, you move forward, and uh, I don't rehash the past. But um, I remember being handed about a week before the debate a stack of five by eight uh, cards about, you know, th this high, full of. Uh, facts and figures that had to do with John McCain's voting record and um, campaign operatives wanted me to memorize many, 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 in fact, all of those facts and, and pieces of data so that I would, uh, my message would coincide with John McCain's. At the end of the day, though, that VP debater has just got to be themselves. They have to stand on their own record and uh, what it is that they would propose in cooperation with the top of the ticket, the presidential nominee, and um, just tell the truth. And that is what Americans are going to crave tonight is just to hear candidness and the truth from Joe Biden and from Paul Ryan. Now, in, in these vice presidential debates and these presidential debates, of course, they try to prepare you before you go out there, and they try to beat up on you more than you'll likely get beat up on when you actually go out there. That's what they've been doing on the Romney-Ryan side and also on the Democratic side. They are having uh, Ted Olson, the former Solicitor General, play Joe Biden as Paul Ryan prepares for tonight's debates. Who played Joe Biden when you were getting ready to debate him, and, and was the real Joe Biden or the fake Joe Biden tougher to debate? I remember that Randy Schuneman played Joe Biden for at least one of our debate prep uh, exercises, and I remember looking at him, staring him down, going, are you really going to be such a stinker in this debate prep? Because he was such a stinker and just hammering me left and right. But that is good prep. Um, you know, uh, Megan, I think it's going to be very, very important for Paul Ryan to do what I attempted to do four years, and that's try to coax out of Joe Biden um, his rationale for all the flip-flops. You know, he had just come out of a primary season where he was beating the heck out of Barack Obama and the positions that Barack Obama had taken as a senator all those years and then the minute that he was chosen for the VP uh, nomination on the Democrat ticket Joe Biden all of a sudden said that uh, you know Barack Obama then was the smartest boy in the room and that he was uh, walking on water and I so wanted to understand what all the flip-flops were in the positions that he had taken then from going from senator to VP nominee I hope that uh, Paul Ryan gets to coax that out of him because it's very important for the electorate to understand how politicians can change their minds, their policies, their principles, their foundational substance so quickly, and it's changed on a dime according to politics, not principle. Do you think that the, either of these men will be nervous tonight? Joe Biden's had some 18 debates 
under his belt just in, in, the, in the recent election cycles because, of course, he was running for the Democratic nomination, didn't get it, lost to Barack Obama, but had a lot of debates on the, on the Democratic side in advance. And Paul Ryan, he's a seven-term congressman, but he, this is really the first time, you know, on a national ticket as it was for you. So tell us, do you think there will be nerves on either side? I don't think so. I think especially uh, Joe Biden, decades and decades and decades, probably longer than you've been alive, Megan, he has been a part of the <laughs> political scene. And I think you get kind of numb to what people are saying about you and to you at that point in terms of anything that would gin up a nervousness. I think Joe Biden especially is like, eh, you know, it's another day. I think who's nervous tonight is Barack Obama because he certainly wants to see the debate shift in terms of attention being deflected from his poor performance, his arrogance, his aloofness, his disconnection that he really exuded in his own debate performance last week. And he wants to see um, the public start talking about something else. And they will talk about something else, and that's the debate results after tonight. I wanted to ask you about one other topic before I let you go, and that is uh, the Associated Press is getting some criticism this week for a photo they ran of Mitt Romney. Uh, he, was, he did a nice thing. He pulled over to the side of the road and offered to do a photo opportunity with some young kids, and a photographer shot a picture of him that is unflattering and looks ridiculous, and the little girl, they later clarified, was just excited that the governor was going to pose with them, but obviously this photo suggests something else. And they came out and apologized for the caption that came with this, but not for the photo. You yourself had something happen when you were running where the AP chose to run a photo of your legs with young uh, boys looking up at you. Do you think that this is media bias or is it a, you know, forgivable mistake? Hell yeah, it's media bias, and it's also some sexism when you consider what the response to Mitt Romney's photo is, which is degrading. And Associated Press, they're jerks for having run that, even with the caption. I mean, absolute jerks and bias to have tried to taint some people's view um, of Mitt Romney by running this photo. It's embarrassing. But when you consider people's results, their, their responses to what this picture is, I don't remember a whole lot of people getting too wee weed up about the photos that were run of me for years. Years ago, including the young men that looked like they were looking at my legs or up my skirt, even. Um, uh, last night, even on Bill O'Reilly, I saw that he did a piece on this segment. I don't know if he did a piece on that when it happened to me or maybe some other women over the years. So I think that it's, it's still kind of a telltale sign of some little bit of sexism in our society that we really need to overcome so that we can all move forward. Uh, you you got to. I know, as the mother of uh, you know a young girl who went through a lot when you were running, uh, you got to feel for the for the little girl who was pictured there. You know, oh, in a way that I'm sure her parents didn't anticipate. Governor, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much.